Uh, he also pointed out uh, the opportunities for mutual uh, enrichment uh, uh, through dialogue. Now I'll uh, go on with uh, Dr. Ashton's comments on Dr. Ashton's uh, paper and presentation. Uh, Dr. Ashton uh, brought a very uh, new dimension to this uh, discussion that the experience in interfaith dialogue or uh, within inter-community dialogue in the Turkish experience uh, as led by Mr. Gudan can actually be, be uh, an example to learn from in other uh, contexts of dialogue, in other contexts of tolerance. Uh, many of the rivalries uh, that, it, that the Turks have experienced uh, in the uh, especially recent history of the country, uh, they are actually paralleled in other societal contexts, including uh, the, the American context. So there are lessons to learn, uh, lessons to learn from this experience. And he uh, paralleled uh, in pointing out to the importance of uh, the tolerance stemming from one's faith. Uh, I'd like to phrase this as, uh, as saying tolerance is good in general, but tolerance isn't better if it comes from faith. If tolerance is increasing in proportion to <coughs> one's faith, then you know, what is better than that? So then, in that case, we, we don't need to be fearful of somebody becoming more pious, more, more faithful, because that will mean that that person will become more, more faithful. So the challenge there is then, uh, how are the teachings and the resources and the channels of education, uh, should, should, how should they be designed so that the increase in faith and piety will lead to uh, the increase in tolerance? Dr. Eshin pointed out uh, the complementary nature of uh, the importance of piety and tolerance and respect for diversity uh, as something that we need to establish uh, if we are to achieve uh, dialogue and peaceful coexistence, not only between communities of uh, Islam and non-Islam, non Christian and uh, Jewish traditions, but also among uh, the various levels of uh, uh, fundamentalism or, or tolerance or uh, liberality within, within single faiths. Uh, Dr. Reshin also pointed out to uh, Mr. Gulen's emphasis on uh, the depoliticization of the religion, or he is pointing out the risks of politicizing religion, uh, just as it uh, damages uh, religion more than it damages uh, politics, it also undermines uh, a peaceful future for the world faith communities. Uh, he also pointed out an important fact that labels or adjectives such as left and right, liberal and conservative, these are uh, essentially tools of the lazy. Uh, if you accept a label for a community, for a group of people, then you don't need to worry about them anymore. Okay? They are this, they are the leftists, or they are the rightists, they are the conservative, they are the liberals. Then I don't need to study every individual, I don't need to get to know them, I don't need to learn what they are, how they think, because they are leftists or they are rightists. So this is an attitude sometimes we adopt without actually recognizing it, uh, without recognizing the danger in this uh, laziness. Uh, so he pointed out that this is an important recognition that everybody has to come, uh, come to grips with. Uh, let me move on with uh, uh, Dr. DeVolt's uh, comments. Uh, Dr. DeVolt uh, pointed out that many of the uh, the concepts that we associate with tolerance and dialogue, or many of the uh, notions and understandings that we uh, study, that we understand under the umbrella terms of tolerance and dialogue, mm -hmm. they are actually embodied uh, in this very term, dialogue. When we look at the history of the term, how it is used, how it is right, and etc., we see that those notions are actually embedded in there. So it is not coincidence that you know, what we are talking about uh, in the context of dialogue, it is actually part of uh, all that term. Uh, he pointed out to uh, the, uh, the interrelationships of conversation and discussion and interaction of equivalent agents for a genuine dialogue to take place. Uh, superiority of one agent over the other actually invalidates uh, dialogue uh, only even if we just look at the definition of the term. Uh, he also pointed out to uh, Habermas's uh, discussion of the uh, communication of the uh, uh, rationality, and in there I caught uh, these three important points that for, uh, for a healthy communication and for a healthy dialogue to take place, uh, there needs to be three conditions. First of all, every point needs to be open to discussion. 
Uh, I don't think this is recognized uh, by the communities that are uh, engaging in dialogue. Uh, this is something that at least the communities need to be uh, aware of, that eventually one should be open to, to the discussion. That doesn't mean acceptance, that doesn't mean subjugation. But if you're not open to discuss, this discussion of some, some uh, concept, some point, then that means you're already limiting uh, how much engagement, how much embracing, how much cooperation you're willing to do with the other party. Openness to discussion is the first condition identified by Habermas. The second was uh, the rights to rational, the, the rights to rationally uh, position your arguments, rationally defend your arguments, rationally criticize the other party's arguments is an important element. And finally, uh, there should be no domination, no distortion of, uh, of the views of the uh, rationalities. So in this sense, the Plato's conception of dialogue and Habermas's conception of uh, communication of rationality and dialogue and Mr. Gulen's uh, view of dialogue and tolerance, uh, they seem to uh, <coughs> harmonize uh, quite uh, excellently. Uh, for this presentation, I'd like to point out to uh, a fact that in, in Turkish language, uh, we have uh, tolerance as translated from uh, French, I believe. But we have another term which actually we use for the concept of tolerance, that is Hoşgörü. And Hoşgörü actually goes beyond uh, what Dr. Kerat pointed out to. Uh, it goes beyond mere tolerance. Uh, so maybe this concept is actually discussed by Mr. Gülen in many contexts. Maybe it should be also explored to, to, to see the, the extents, uh, the concept of tolerance as understood in the West, how much it can be extended to more cooperative, to more productive uh, limits. Uh, finally, uh, Dr. Yildirim and Dr. Maxwell, uh, in their presentation, uh, we have learned the definitions of important concepts such as dialogue and tolerance in uh, Mr. Gulen's writing. Uh, again, Mr. Uh, Dr. Yildirim emphasized uh, the need for dialogue, uh, according to Mr. Gulen, in the present context. And interestingly enough, uh, in, uh, most of you might be aware that uh, UNESCO has declared uh, November 21st, I believe, uh, starting in 1995, is the International Day of Tolerance. And in their website uh, about this day, they say that uh, tolerance is the basis for the guarantee of human rights and for the future of democracy. Uh, typically, hate mongers take advantage of the ignorance of the masses, ignorance of the people. And then they castigate these masses against each other. So, education leading to tolerance, leading to recognition of others' rights, is critical in today's context that is recognized by UNESCO. Uh, so with that, I conclude and thank all the presenters. We now have a very serious sort of choice to make. There is time for general discussion or questions, which, uh, because there's 10 minutes allocated, it's rather brief. Uh, what is the word in Turkish for khutbah, please? Um, khutbah, fine. This was not the time for a khutbah, to say the least. Uh, but it is time for 